All right, good afternoon. Um, today, Emergency Relief Coordinator Mark Lokok visited Damascus to engage with the government of Syria on how best to further scale up the collective humanitarian response across Syria and how to ensure that those in greatest need are assisted and protected as they deserve. His one-day visit coincides also with a visit to Syria by the High Commissioner for Refugees, Filippo Grande. And as announced by our colleagues in Geneva this morning, the Special Envoy for Syria, Stefan Di Mistura, invited Egypt, France, Germany, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, and the United Kingdom, as well as the United States, for joint consultations at the UN office on 14 September. The Special Envoy would like to take this opportunity to follow up on the June 25th meeting and discuss with senior representatives of those countries the way ahead on the political process pursuant to Security Council Resolution 22. 54, and that includes the UN efforts to facilitate the establishment of a constitutional committee and the broader dimensions of that effort. And uh, keeping on Syria, back here, the Security Council met this morning on Syria and was briefed by John Ging, the Director of Operations for the Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs. He told council members that recent weeks have been had seen further serious deterioration of the humanitarian situation in the northwest of Syria, with intense aerial bombardment and shelling reported in parts of Idlib, Aleppo, Hama, and Latakia governorates, resulting in the death and injury of civilians. Mr. Geng said that aid organizations are using cross-border assistance deliveries, which provide a critical lifeline for hundreds of thousands of civilians. Some 680,000 people received food from Turkey in July alone. He noted that in the southwest, the government of Syria has now regained control over the mass, vast majority of Dara, Kunietra, and Azueda governorates, which has led to the large-scale return of internally displaced people. But Mr. Ging cautioned that massive levels of humanitarian needs persist, and the UN continues to provide aid in partnership with the Syrian Arab Red Crescent and other local organizations. Mr. Ging also called on members of the Council to do whatever they can to ensure a de-escalation in Idlib as well as surrounding areas. He emphasized that the worst case scenario would overwhelm humanitarian capacities and has the potential to create a humanitarian emergency at a scale not yet seen during this crisis. And keeping on the Security Council subject, as you know, the Secretary General will be speaking at the Security Council open meeting on Myanmar, and that's at 3 p.m. this afternoon. Uh, you will recall that he, during his recent visit to Cox's Bazaar, where he met with Rohingya refugees and heard their harrowing stories. The Secretary General will stress the need for accountability, which he believes is essential for genuine reconciliation between all ethnic groups and is a prerequisite for regional security and stability. Earlier this morning, the Secretary General met with actress and UNHCR Goodwill Ambassador Kate Blanchett, and she is also scheduled to speak at this afternoon's Council meeting. Having visited a Rohingya refugee camp in Bangladesh this year, they both agreed on the need to persist in seeking an end to the horrific suffering and to maintain international attention to this crisis. <clears throat> Our humanitarian colleagues tell us that armed conflict continues in Yemen, Hodeida's governorate, where more than 500,000 people have been displaced since June 1st. Eight partners have provided emergency relief kits containing food rations, hygiene, supplies, and items to preserve the dignity to nearly all of the recently displaced. Additional assistance, including cash, shelter kits, and essential household items are also being provided based on assessed needs. Regular humanitarian programs also continue in parallel across Yemen and have reached 8.1 million people with direct assistance for this year. For its part, the UN Refugee Agency said it is ramping up its uh, response to help civilians who are fleeing the fighting from in Hodeida Governorate, and it is calling on all parties to ensure the physical safety of civilians and their freedom of movement and to guarantee safe routes for those who wish to leave the conflict area. The Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohammed is in Copenhagen, Denmark today, where she's holding bilateral discussions with senior officials from the Danish government, as well as other stakeholders, focusing on the 2030 uh, Sustainable Development Agenda, the repositioning of the UN development system, and other issues of mutual interest. We expect she'll be having similar discussions in Oslo in Norway tomorrow. 
And the Democratic Republic of the Congo, <clears throat> the UN Children's Fund, said today it is taking measures to ensure a smooth, safe start to the new school year in Ebola-affected regions in the eastern part of the country. UNICEF says that some 250 schools in the Ebola-affected zones with some 82,000 pupils. The measures to be taken include trained, training of school principals and more, more than 1,700 teachers about Ebola and about preventive measures against the virus, also how to set up procedures for early detection, isolation, and referral to health services for children who, have, who may have Ebola-like symptoms. More information online. And today, the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, warned that the outbreak of African swine fever threatens to spread from China to other Asian countries. Currently, there is no effective vaccine to protect swine from this disease, um, and its outbreaks can be devastating. Chinese authorities have taken some measures to control the spread of the virus, and the Food and Agriculture Organization is communicating with them closely and monitoring the situation. FAO also urged regional collaboration to respond more effectively to, the, to stop the further spread of the swine, African swine fever. And you will see that yesterday we issued, uh, we sent you a note to answer questions about the Secretary General's meeting with the Nicaraguan Minister of Foreign Affairs, Denis Moncada. The Secretary General insisted on the need for full respect to the population's human rights and the importance of a truly inclusive dialogue. He also reiterated the UN's readiness to support that process. Basta. Questions? Oh, well, you've got the mic, Abdul Hamid. And then. Thank you, Steph. Um, there are two reports this week, one on Myanmar, and that implicates at least five senior uh, army generals, and it calls for accountability. And another report released this morning about, from the experts on Yemen, and also calls for accountability. How could accountability be uh, implemented? Or just recommendation and will, nothing will happen? There, as you know, there are different mechanisms uh, for accountability within national and international uh, systems. Uh, and we hope that the parties concerned and the international community will consider all of the options. The, sec it's, uh, the Secretary General uh, very strongly feels that is in all conflict, especially those, uh, mostly those, I mean, especially those where civilians uh, bear the brunt, uh, that ultimately uh, people will be need uh, will need to be held accountable. Okay. Uh, behind you, Masuna, we'll go. Thank you, Steph. I have uh, two questions. Uh, first, on uh, the uh, regional refugee crisis mm -hmm. uh, today, immigration authorities from Colombia, Ecuador, uh, sorry, Colombia, Peru and Brazil gathered in Bogota to be able to find common ground on how to better mm -hmm. deal mm -hmm. with uh, this uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, crisis. Uh, so I wonder what's the uh, view of the SG on the beginning of these talks between these local authorities uh, to try to solve <coughs> this issue and also uh, has the UN had a role on these talks and how is the UN? I, I have to it? check whether or not our humanitarian colleagues were represented or were participating in the talks. Obviously, whenever you do have a, a crisis of regional proportion, uh, it is always best to to coordinate. Um, for the Secretary General's standpoint, he's asked uh, UNHCR and the International Organization for Migration for a proposal on a regional mechanism uh, for, from the UN standpoint on how to coordinate, uh, to best coordinate our response and our support uh, for those countries uh, who are taking in uh, Venezuelans. And just uh, uh, another question on, on Honduras in this case. Today in Tegucigalpa, a new round of talks backed by the UN started uh, to be able to deal with the crisis of the alleged fraud that happened on the general election in 2017. So uh, this dialogue began today. However, there are some political key uh, actors that are not taking part in that discussion, namely the President Hernandez. He's not uh, going there. Let me, let me uh, check. I don't have anything for you on uh, on Honduras, but I will check. Okay. Masood. Uh, yeah, thank you, Stephen. So I want to know, uh, follow up on Abdul Hamid's question. I just have, uh, in both the reports that he, I mean, that were mentioned, both the reports, every time they've said may have committed, 
could have committed, but there is no firm thing that, yes, they have committed war crimes. So now, is that deliberate to leave a wiggle room for these countries to come back? No, I mean, first, first of all, that's, that's a question best addressed to, uh, to the authors of the report, who, as you know, in both the case of Yemen and of, uh, and of Myanmar, the two we're talking to, are, are independent reports. But obviously, uh, before people are convicted of a crime, uh, they need to be uh, to go through some sort of judicial uh, of a judicial process. Yeah, but the thing is that there are several United Nations own uh, repertoires and who have said that. I mean, especially in case of Yemen, they've said that there have been these war crimes being committed, and and this is another report which leaves this wiggle room for no, them. I think they're, they're, first, I mean, these are questions addressed to the authors of the report, but they are reporting as, as uh, I, I would like to assume, as, uh, and honestly and transparently as they can, based on the information that they've, they've received. Meaning, there was, as you said, there's no accountability to be, uh, to be, to be talked about now, at this point in time. No, Given not, I mean, in, Masoud, in first, it's not. Report. It's not. Uh, it's it's not what uh, what we're talking about here. Uh, there needs to be effective measures taken to ensure accountability uh, for violations of, of of human of human rights. Uh, that's clear, and that's the Secretary General's position. Yes, sir. Oh, sorry. Then Devlin. Matt Yangu from Xinhua News Agency. I heard that the Secretary General is going to Beijing to mm -hmm. attend the China's African Cooperation Forum. And on different occasions, as he said, China is a leader in South-South Cooperation. And there was his comment on China-Africa Cooperation. Thank you. Uh, as, as we said, we announced that the Secretary General will be going to uh, China as he was invited to address uh, the China-Africa Summit. He looks forward uh, to that. I think uh, China has an important role to play uh, in, uh, in helping uh, other developing uh, countries. Uh, and the Secretary General looks forward to engaging with both uh, African leaders and Chinese leaders during that meeting. Yes, Stefan, sorry. Thank you, Steph. Could you repeat uh, the countries that are going to attend the meeting with Stefan de Mistura? And then I have a question on that. Uh, why don't you phrase your question as I look to answer your second question as I look to answer your no, first No, well, one. because it concerns okay. the country. Uh, uh, just, he's invited Egypt, France, Germany, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, the UK, okay, and the, the US. US. Right. Okay. Uh, I, I don't understand why these countries without Russia, Iran, or Syria. As, I think, as you recall, he's also had uh, separate discussions recently with, with those three countries. Iftikhar. Uh, Thank you, Stefan. Uh, uh, has the Secretary General sent a condolence message to the family of Yes, he has. He has, uh, he has addressed uh, a letter to, uh, to Ms. Cindy uh, McCain to express his condolences on the death of, uh, of John McCain, I think underscored uh, the, the personal courage that Senator McCain has has always shown, uh, and especially in his, uh, and in addition to uh, to his vocal uh, stand against uh, the use of torture. Yes, sir. I have several questions. I'm sure you. you've uh, you've stored them up during your. No, leave. I'll start with the. Uh, I want to ask you if the same measures granted to the late Kofi Annan. Uh, the same had been granted to Butros Butros Ghali. From mo what I'm noticing, there is so much uh, attention and prominence given to the passing away of Kofi Annan. And I compare that to this late uh, Secretary General Butros Butros Ghali, and I don't see the same measures or equal well, I mean, attention. It, 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 from, from our standpoint, we are following uh, the same uh, uh, the same procedures of uh, uh, I think the General Assembly will hold a meeting. Uh, there was a, uh, a deposit of, uh, of flowers by uh, by the Secretary General, um, 
and the, there was a black ribbon put on uh, across this portrait, and this was done uh, for the uh, uh, the former Secretary General, Mr. Boutros, Boutros Ghali. As for the prominence that may be given in the media, that is really way beyond my control. Uh, the, on last Friday, Saudi Arabia beheaded a woman. Her name is Isra Al Ghamgham. Probably with the, one of the rare moments that when Saudi Arabia beheaded a woman, accusing her of being anti-state. Was there any statement or any attention given we, to that incident? Uh, this was brought up at the briefing, and we repeated that uh, we stand firmly against uh, the use of the death penalty. Yeah, and my last question. I promise. For today. <laughs> For today. <laughs> On 19th of July, the Israeli Knesset passed a law, which is called Jewish nationalism law, or whatever it, it, it was there. 55 Knesset members voted against it, 62 did. And it was labeled as a textbook apartheid uh, law it, because it defined Israel as exclusive Jewish state only and denied the right of self-determination to anyone in the same land. Was there any statement, was there any position, any comment by any UN official on that yes, law? We, uh, we answered, there were questions raised, I think, on... Uh, either the 19th or the 20th of July, and we answered those questions. Evelyn, and then we'll Can go. you briefly tell me? I mean, I've, I've restated, I, my, the, or that was our position at the time, and you can check the transcript. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to repeat what I asked previously, uh, just in case I missed something. Any news about funeral or memorial service for Kofi, and aside from the one in Ghana? Uh, I think we're still waiting to hear from the General Assemblies to when they will schedule their, their uh, session. Thank you. I, I